Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how a liar will continue changing his story. Look at the angles from which the Quran has discussed this. Who would have ever guessed that the Quran has so much depth on every topic that we want to pick up? The Quran says, a person who's a liar, he will change his story and he will change the truth from where it is in order to suit him and in order to suit his whims and fancies. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And here Allah is speaking of the liars. It is the same verse wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the liars. Remember when we are discussing these topics every night, I have only picked up the topics where the word connected to the topic is made mention of in the Quran. Those are the only verses I'm picking up. So I'm not picking up other verses. If you haven't heard the word in the portion of the verse we've read, you should know it's slightly before it or slightly after it. Sometimes it's a bit too long to mention the whole verse. But the point is what we are trying to drive home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding. May He make us from those who can appreciate the fact that we are from the, the ummah and the nation of this Quran. What a blessed nation, what a blessed book, what a miracle. I promise you, if the Jews and the Christians and the non-Muslims had to know the blessings of the depth of the Quran, they would fight us in order to get to that particular book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance and grant them guidance as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks then about how a person who is a liar, will get caught at some stage. They will get caught. You know, they will change their story. Come to you, change the story. When they are asked again, there's a little bit of a change in the story. When they ask there, there will be another change in the story. A liar will get caught, if not today, tomorrow. And when a person lies, the Quran says that they have a certain shackle on them. They are tied now. They will never taste happiness until they unshackle themselves from that particular lie. Therefore, it is my duty and yours to stop lying and to encourage others to be truthful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us truthfulness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, فَلَمَّا رَأَى قَمِيصَهُ قُدَّ مِن دُبُرٍ قَالَ إِنَّهُ مِن كَيْدِكُنَّ إِنَّ كَيْدَكُنَّ عَظِيمٌ When that minister happened to see that the shirt of Yusuf alayhi salam was torn from behind, he looked at the women and he said, No, you people are at fault, you are the liars. He knew they were the liars. Why? Because there was a sign to prove the liars. May Allah protect us. And this is why later on in the same surah, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam had a chance to clarify his name. And they happened to say that we were the ones who had tried to lure this innocent man. Yusuf was actually innocent. And this is mentioned in the same surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us. And he addresses us in many different ways. Telling us when someone says something, do not accuse them of lying until you test them and you know that they are telling a lie. Because then you also become a liar. You want to accuse innocent people of lies? That itself is falsehood. It is accusation which is even worse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An naml When Sulaiman alayhi salam saw the hudhud or the hoopoo bird, and the hoopoo bird came with some news, and said, I've seen a certain lady who is worshipping the sun and so on, and she has a great kingdom and what have you. He didn't say you're a liar. But he doubted the story a little bit. So he said, Listen, O Hupu bird, I'm going to test you to see whether you are telling the truth or whether you are lying. We will find out just now. Take this letter of mine and go and give it to her and then see what happens. Now if he was lying, if the bird was lying, naturally it wouldn't be able to come back. But the bird was telling the truth and the letter got there, subhanallah. So when your child comes back from school telling you a big story, you can test the child before you actually say, my son is a liar. And at the same time, if it is a story too big to digest, 
you need to remember, just verify it before you actually believe it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. I see the young boys are looking at me like I've said something very bad. No, it's just an example of a child. But this can happen when the adults also give you news in a bigger way. Because you wouldn't expect them to lie. And I think the bigger disease and the bigger disaster is when big people lie, when old people lie, when very old people lie. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood and may He make us from amongst those who are truthful at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in Surah Al-Ankabut that Allah Himself is going to test every single one of us, every single one of us, whether we are truthful or whether we are liars. Listen to what He says in the opening verses of Surah Al-Ankabut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Indeed, we have tested all those before, and Allah is going to test every single one of us in order to know who is truthful and who are liars regarding their belief in Allah. Isn't it every one of us declares that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger? Do we just say it by our tongues or do we believe it? Allah says we are going to test you to see if you are liars or to see if you are truthful. May we be from amongst those whom when we are tested, we come out with flying colors of truthfulness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that a liar, the punishment of a liar will be served to the liar himself. If someone comes to you with lies, then that particular lies will harm whom? It will harm them in terms of sin. But if we go ahead and believe that lie, then naturally we will also be affected depending on what type of news and information it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ghafir that there was a man who accepted Islam from the family of Fir'aun. And he told his people, he said, look, this man is coming with news. If he is telling you the truth, then punishment will overtake you. And if he is lying, his lies will overtake him. And it will be a means of his own destruction. If he is telling a lie, then the lie will return to him as a sin. And not to every one of us, but listen to what he is saying at least. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to listen to the good message and to take heed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks of another quality of liars. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, it is so true. A liar thinks that everyone else is also a liar. It's a fact. Why? Because when you come up with news, if someone tells you, look, I made it to Johannesburg in two hours. Okay, you know it's a lie. Unless it's obviously by aircraft. And then you end up telling them, well, you know what? I made it in 10 hours. They still think you're lying. May Allah protect us all. They still think you're lying because they lied. So a person who has that guilt will always feel that others are similar. So they will suffer because really it is a disease. When someone lies, what happens? The Quran tells us that they think everyone else is a liar because they cannot distinguish between what is right and wrong anymore. They've lost the power to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from lies. This is the disease. And this is why there is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked a few questions. That whether a Muslim commits this sin and that sin, and he said, look, maybe this sin, maybe that sin, a Muslim can repent for this one and for that one. Then he was asked, does a Muslim lie? And he says, Al a true believer never ever lies. There's no reason for you to lie. Why do you want to lie? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood and lies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud about the liars, وَمَا نَرَى لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِن فَضْلٍ بَلْ نَظُنُّكُمْ كَاذِبِينَ When the messengers came to them, the liars, they looked at the messengers and said, there's no virtue for you above us. We think you people are liars. Because they themselves were liars. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the messengers told them, Nuh alayhi salam told his people who told him that he was a liar, he told them, سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ يَأْتِيهِ عَذَابٌ يُخْزِيهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ كَاذِبٌ Hang on. We, we, wait, we shall see who is the liar here and whom the punishment will come upon. 
And wallahi, the punishment came upon them. And at that time, it was too late. They were ta- overtaken by a flood and every single one of them was destroyed. May Allah never ever do that to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about another quality of the liars. The liars, they love to disunite the, what is known as Jama'atul Muslimin. The liars, they love to disunite the Muslim community. 